Oh, hello, welcome to another quick three-point edit um, video and we're looking at um, my recent production of a short film that I made with my kids called Dream Big. Uh, so, here's the timeline that I produced after quite a bit of fiddling around trying to get everything to work properly. Um, the shooting was straightforward, only took a short um, morning I think to shoot. The blue screen work uh, went a bit more slowly than that, and we'll have a quick look of look at that later. Um, I think it's worth noting that I created pretty much the whole project in Blender all by itself, uh, from the editing through to the sound post production, which was interesting, and uh, also the cro the traditional chroma keying effects. Uh, and masking all done in Blender and this all happened whilst Project Mango was going on of course Tears of Steel bringing a lot of new features to the um, to the um, Blender tool, tool set. Uh, at the same time that was happening there was some quite wonderful development happening with some new add-ons and those add-ons were the, um, uh, the let me see, I'll pull up the add-on window. My add-ons are a bit small as they're running off of a, a USB stick. I'll go down to the bottom here. So, sequencer extra add-ons, extra action, sorry. Uh, these uh, produce a range of new effects like um, slip and slide and copy attributes for the VSE, so that's been terrific. Uh, what else is there? Oh, of course, I couldn't have done this without the VSC to Compositor um, add-on, and that effectively sends VSC clips or strips to a Compositor scene so that you can work on them. Uh, for example, let me see. Oh, of course, the chroma key. Here we go. This one. So here is, I'll play that through. Playback's not very clean, I'm afraid. Okay, so here's a good representative sc screenshot. The purple strip at this top is my render, just so it would play a bit quicker. I saved that out as a frame sequence. But below that, I have some other video clips. The green clip is the resulting scene, but under that, there is this shot of the children in the background. And then this strip is a shot of the house in the foreground. Both of these clips have been trimmed to start at the same time and end at the same time and then they were both sent by selecting both of them calling that um, that add-on which appears down here edit strip with compositor we simply edit multiple strips with the compositor click on that button and it sends it to a new scene and if I jump over to compositing and we look at kids comp 2 for example what effectively that add-on does is provide me with two image inputs and their start not start frames and offsets are set accordingly so it begin it the node understands that the movie that's being loaded will start at frame 1 but we want the images to play from frame 74 and it runs for 55, uh, 55 frames in total. Doesn't seem right, but there you go. Oh, we're on frame 55, I'm sorry. So if I hit F12, quick render, hopefully it'll find the frames. Oh, it doesn't look like... Yes, there it goes. Okay, so... Oh change this to viewer node so you can see what I had as a source here we can see a final fine example of my very very bad chroma key or blue screen 
The edges are quite good, but I had these black regions, lots of dark shadows, uh, which wasn't very good. Probably some spill, but at least the lighting was even. And I also had this as my background shot. They were both shot at the same, roughly the same time on the same day, so the lighting matched quite well. I also set my uh, other stars of the show up pointing the same direction so my lighting direction, my key light from the sun or the sky came from roughly the same place. Here is a node group that I constructed and we'll run through the node group perhaps. So what happened was that I brought in both my inputs to the node group and I could reuse this node group later as a key that worked. I first of all had to flip the source image. Let me see. I might just add a viewer here. Output viewer. I flipped and scaled the shot of the children so that we could see I could lay them into the shot correctly. I also scaled the shot of my house with a foreground image. I also tracked the foreground image. There was a small amount of camera wobble. I think I stabilized that and I applied that stabilization um, to that image. Hmm, looks like I might have inverted that actually. Then I also performed this key, so we'll just duplicate that. This is the key of the children. That's with the new keying node. Excellent key. I've also applied some um, garbage matting around the outside to get rid of those, the overshoot from the screen. So you can see, whoops, you can see here that there's quite a bit of excess uh, overshoot from the blue screen. That's where I added these ellipse masks. Perhaps if I turn off the ellipse masks, you'll see their result. Mute that. Mute that one. Post M for mute. And mute that one. Ah, there we go. So you can see this is what I've matted out of that image with those ellipse nodes. And all I had to do was use their X and Y coordinates to move them around to the appropriate positions. So I'll turn that one back on. Oh, that's the top. Turn the next one back on. Where will that one work? That's the side. Finally turn this one back on. That's this small corner over here, I think. Yes. Now there's a small bit of contamination at the top but because I was raising the children up in the frame I didn't have to eliminate that so I didn't bother with that one. It would have been nice to be able to just draw a garbage mat in there and I guess I could have done that with the mask tool but the mask tool mm, is interesting the way it's integrated at the moment. Um, I did some color balance to the to the shot of the children before I added them to the the scene just adding a little bit of are green and blue. Uh, so let me see what else happened here. Also, <coughs> I also added. I think this is the light wrap. Let me see. Here is the light wrap. So I basically uh, in increase the brightness. Uh, levels uh, throughout with a curves modifier node and then I uh, eroded the nodes a little bit so let's take one of, whoops, duplicate one of those using this erode node I have eroded around the edge and I overlaid that on top of my light wrap node so that it would look like I was getting um, additional light wrap around the edges. Let's see if I have 
that. So I've taken this this image of the burned out or overexposed children. I've laid that on top of the regular exposed sorry, I've laid that under the regularly exposed children to get this very light edge around them that you might be able to see here. So you can see this outline that's very light. It blends the edges into this sky a bit more effectively. And then we lay the house on top. Oh, there was a note I could have shown you before. We'll take the output of this alpha over, which is the house. And there they go behind the house. Now the house also had some keying issues. The sky wasn't giving me a very good key, and really the trees don't give me a very good key either. If we go to the better render here, you can see that the light wrap reason works reasonably well to hide some issues with their edges, although there's still some dark edges around here. I probably should have run more than one key, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. And you can see the tree also has issues where I, I could have run a much better luminance key. Really all I did was key the, um, key the sky out with a clip and um, use that as my set alpha for that image. So that's one effect that I performed anyway with uh, with my my keying nodes. Then I grouped all of that as we can see here and I was able to reuse that group I'm going add down to layout uh, sorry to group to no group and I was able to reuse that no group. Strangely that no group doesn't seem to be labeled appropriately. If I change to where I made it first here you can see that I called it label kids key 1 and kids key 2 but when I go whoops Oh no, crash. Oh, okay. I've paused that and I've come back now. Um, uh, we had a quick crash with Blender, which is something I'm very used to. So this group actually was had been labeled Kids Key 1 and named Kids Key 2. But when I go to add the group, sorry, when I go and shift A, add group, it only says no group. It doesn't have a label or a name. I don't understand why but it is effectively the same node group as you can see here with really this being the functional care the one single care and I was able to add a bit of pre-blur to get over the problem with the um, the uh, very poor um, uh, compressor from my Canon 550D DSLR um, I was able to change the screen balance because there was a little bit of um, poor key from the background. also used uh, a root uh, fall off for the um, edges um, because I was finding that the edges weren't working terribly well. Edge kernel here um, was working exceptionally well uh, for garbage matting around edges. Um, es essentially um, Blender's Kia, this keying node, um, now determines where your master edge is and you can fill inside or out of that or at least preserve the details along that edge. It's terrific. And it has a built-in black clip and white clip values so that you can um, uh, increase the contrast of your mask, which is terrific. And you have a, um, a feather um, and post blur available on your mask on the way out. So it's really, um, it's really put together a whole range of different um, node tools that you would ordinarily have to group together anyway really is a wonderful new care. Anyway, uh, that's enough for this quick look. Um, that's the keying for the uh, external. Maybe next we'll have a look at the uh, masking um, that I had to produce through the tracker or movie clip um, tool, which looks like this. I'll have to wait for next time. Thanks very much for listening. Bye.